It's Monty Python. Hello. I'm Georgia and I've just started my second full-time job in bioinformatics. I'm here to share how to get from the wet lab into the dry lab and what life looks like on the dry side. We're going to be talking all things starting your new job. Starting a new job can be so overwhelming. There is so much going on. There's so many things to learn and there's just so much to take in. You know, before you know it, you've been there for a year and you're thinking, ah, where has the time gone? So today's video, I'm gonna focus on the key things that if you nail these in your first month or so, you're gonna be setting yourself up to win. Let's discuss the, the key things you really should be doing in those crucial first couple of months in your first new bioinformatics role. Starting a new role can be super daunting, take my word for it. But if you are as prepared as you can be and you smash those first couple months, then life is gonna feel a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna share with you all the things I've learned across the few years I've been in the industry of all those key things it's really worth doing in those first couple months in your first bioinformatics role. First, very, very key thing you need to be doing in that first few weeks or months is to join all of the relevant information channels. So what are these? Well, you'll probably have a Slack or a Microsoft Teams, but it's joining all of those regular important channels that have information that's relevant to your specific role. So the first thing is ask your direct team or your manager, what are the relevant channels you need to be in, in terms of the work that you're doing, um, and also any kind of interest groups that there might be within your institute or company. And then also make sure that you don't just take their word for it, go and search yourself for things happening in the institute because there might be other channels, you know, that your team aren't in, in the wider institute that are relevant for you and the things you wanna get out of your role. So definitely make sure that you join all the relevant Slack channels. Another one is mailing lists. So there'll be different groups, you know, have different mailing lists. So normally on your kind of internal intranet, you'll be able to find out all of the mailing lists and then join the ones that are relevant for you. One major thing is traditionally, there are mailing lists and there are Slack channels for things to do with the IT systems. So make sure you get on those, especially the ones that are relevant to things like the cluster and OpenStack. So make sure you join those channels, especially because then you'll receive updates about what's going on on the compute clusters, which will be relevant for you when you're thinking, why aren't any of my jobs working? <laughs> And talking of clusters, you need to make sure that you have access to your compute cluster. So contacting IT, contacting the HPC team and making sure that you get access to the compute cluster. In some institutes, you have to do a specified training course before you can have access to the compute cluster. And in some other companies and institutes, you don't have to. So just have a look, make sure you do what you need to do, but get your access to the compute cluster so you can start running your big ass jobs. All right, number two on the topic of training. So yes, you might have training so you can use the HPCs and also your company will probably have a lot of essential training that you'll have to do. Piece of advice, make sure that in your first week or two, just smash through all of those essential training videos that you have to do, because the sooner you get them done and out of the way, the sooner you can really start getting your teeth into your work. Because if you have these essential trainings hanging over your head, then it's very difficult to kind of organize your time properly and kind of devote your mental energy towards your new exciting role. So get all of those done as quickly as you can. And then whilst we're on the topic of training, so your institute or company most likely will offer different types of training that are through the institute or company. Some of these will be in-house trainings, some will be kind of links to other institutes doing training, but usually there'll be some page on the internet where you can go and find out all of the training courses available to you. And I think when you first start a new role, I think it's really, really important. Just read and understand what's available to you. Because in my first role, I only found out a year and a half into it that we got courses at the University of Cambridge on bioinformatics for free. 
and I, we had access to them and I had no idea. Make sure that you understand what your company offers in terms of training. See what's relevant to you and the skill set you want to build while you're there. And then you can start planning and incorporating going on those trainings and also that kind of, you know, continuous professional development that you should be speaking to your new manager about. Okay, so the third thing that you should definitely, definitely do as soon as you start is get accustomed to the team's way of working. And I'm kind of talking more computational in this sense. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna know what projects are happening in the team. Uh, and you know, if you need to prioritize which ones you're likely to be involved in, and then make sure that you ask for access to the code bases of these projects. So traditionally they might be housed in GitLab, GitHub, or they might be housed, you know, I don't know, just on the compute clusters, or on someone's personal laptop, if you are crazy like that. But yeah, make sure that you ask for access to the code bases of the projects so that you can start looking at the code, familiarizing yourself with what, you know, the project and the code is doing. And then you've just got access from the get-go. And then when you need to access a certain repo to do some analysis or just to look at something, you've already got the access, you've got the lay of the land, you know what you're looking for. So yeah, ask for access to all of the relevant repos um, and then also ask the more senior bioinformaticians, what is the way of working in the team? So there are many different ways that we can work in bioinformatics and traditionally most teams will try and work the same because that means that everything is much neater. <laughs> Make sure you understand how the team works. Are they working on private Git repositories? Are they working on repositories that are kind of attached to their institute on Git? Are they just working on their own personal machines? Is there a setup within the compute cluster that they're working in? It's really key to understand how the team works and then you can, you know, bring ideas if you've got ideas to bring about different ways of working but aligning yourself with the team's way of working from the get-go is very very crucial to like ensuring you're going to have a smooth ride as you progress through your new job uh, another thing is make sure you have a ask around about how people actually do their work so how do they set up their analytical environments sometimes if you want to work in a jupyter notebook um, and I love Jupyter Notebooks. And so often the kind of compute teams within the institutes will be able to have kind of, like have GUIs for you to be able to launch a server with um, to access Jupyter via a GUI system. Or you can launch Jupyter on your own. So you might have a, a Docker image or a singularity image that like containerizes a certain environment and then you could launch a Jupyter through that. So yeah, there's many kind of different ways of working. So I think ask around, see what everyone else is doing. And then if there's any leeway to do it your own way, obviously see what is more comfortable for you. But the first thing is see how your team are working, what's their analytical environment like, and then yeah, go from there. Could just be launching a, a Conda environment. So yeah, just see what the, what the Institute and your team does and then go from there. Fourth thing to say uh, is, and this is not to be overlooked, I think this one's really key. So it's your social media. A lot of things are online. Having an online presence is important. So I think first things first in your first week or month or so, make sure that you've changed your LinkedIn, get your new job title on there. If you had that you were open to work, get rid of that so recruiters stop messaging you. Make sure that you update your company's website with your profile on it. So often they'll be kind of like, behind the scenes things you have to click to confirm that you want your profile on the website. So it's really good to do this so that if someone needs to understand what department you're in and who you are, if they search you up on the website, they're gonna know who you are and where you're working. So very important to do that. And then the other thing with social media too, is if you're on Twitter, and I know there's like debate around Twitter X at the moment, but <laughs> if you're on Twitter, um, I'd advise to start then following lots of groups within your new workplace or kind of more relevant companies and accounts so that your feed starts becoming more aligned with the work environment that you're now going into. So yeah, make sure that you kind of start adjusting the information that you receive to be more along the lines of your new position. And um, this also goes for things like podcasts, you know, make sure that you're kind of listening and absorbing information that's relevant to your new environment. 
so yeah, that's it for socials and social media. And then number five. So this sounds so cliche, but you just have to be organized. Um, and when I'm talking about organization, there's kind of two arms here. So you've got your code organization, which yeah, if you get this right from the beginning, chef's kiss. Um, and then you've got your second organization, which is just your kind of personal note-taking planning organization. In bioinformatics, I've said this time and time again, we don't just sit coding away forever, not doing any kind of anything else. So yes, we code, but also you're going to be reading papers. You're going to be making notes, going to meetings, making plans for your professional development. And all of these things are much better and more efficient if they are tracked. So making sure that when you start your new job, start with a note taking system. I've recently like, well, in my new job, I've now gone on to Notion, which changed my life. I feel like I'm really late on the Notion bandwagon because when I used to look at it before, I'd just see empty white page and wouldn't know what to do. Whereas I feel like more creative now. So I was like, oh, I can customize it. It's so exciting. Um, but anyway, there's things like Evernote, OneNote, um, you know, even like Google Docs, whatever works for you. But just make sure that as soon as you start, create a note taking system because there's going to be so many things that you need to be keeping a track of. Uh, and then in terms of organization with your bioinformatics code, um, yeah, basically when you first start a new role, there's going to be so much new information. And it's not just new information like what data type are you working with? What's the you know hypotheses we're asking? Lots of names that you're learning. How much is the jacket potato in the canteen? Like there's loads of new information coming coming at you. And one really key thing is the fact that you're going to start getting so many different paths to directories. You're going to have so many new links to relevant databases, etc. So one really key thing when you first start out, if you grab some data from somewhere or you grab like a metric from somewhere to use in your analysis, just reference it and just, just write a little comment in your notebook or in your code or in your markdown and just let yourself know where did you get that information from? Where was that data from? What are the logging credentials to access the databases? Like make sure that in the first couple months record all of this, even if it seems really silly, because the next time you go to do that thing, you can really easily see where you got that data from. As always, annotate, annotate, annotate your code, make variable sensible names, because the more effort you put into making your code cleaner and more annotated, the easier it's going to be for you and others to use it down the line. So start as you mean to go on with your organisational skills. This list was by no means exhaustive, but I'd say these are five pretty essential things that you definitely should do in that first few weeks of a bioinformatics role. So I'm Georgia, this has been Genomics with Georgia and see you on another video where we're gonna keep chatting about new job energy and the best things that you should be doing when you get into that position of moving over to the computational side. See you on the other side.